This lesson is on experimental and theoretical probability. The first probability we'll work with is, is experimental, and what experimental probability is, is the ratio of the number of times the event occurs to the number of trials. So the number of times an event occurs to the number of trials. So the more trials performed, the more accurate the estimate is likely to be. So what that means is, is you could be flipping a coin. And let's say your number of trials to flip the coin, you're going to flip that coin 10 times. And um, that would be the number of trials, which would be 10. And it says number of times the event occurs. Let's say you want heads to occur. And let's say when you flip that coin 10 times, a head occurs seven times. So theoretical probability is the number of times the event occurs over the total number of trials. So seven heads over a total number of 10 trials. That's how experimental probability works. So sometimes too, when you're working with probability, um, you'll see it written in a fraction decimal form or as a percent. When it's in the fraction or decimal form, that's any range from zero to one. Um, or uh, in the percent form, it's going to be anywhere from 0% to 100%. Sometimes when you're working with experimental uh, probability, they'll ask you how likely an event will occur. And what you'll look at is a chart ranging from 0% to 100%. Anything that's close to 0%, that's impossible, impossible for the event to occur. So the event with a probability of zero will never happen, so that's impossible. Unlikely ranges anywhere from like maybe 20% to 40%-ish. 50% um, um, as likely as not, so that's an event um, probability of 50% have the same um, chance of something not happening. So 50% is right directly in the middle something to more likely happen is going to range anywhere from about 60% to 80 and something certain to happen is about 100%. So you might have to write the terms impossible, unlikely, likely, and certain. They give you a situation of an event um, and you ha might have to state what the probability of it to occur. So for instance, um, rolling two dice and it both landing on one landing on a two, one landing on a five. Well, that's kind of a 50-50 chance, but probably more unlikely to happen. I mean, it could happen, but it's more unlikely or 50% chance. So we're going to look at some examples of experimental probability here. And for example one, they want you to use this table right here working with experimental probability. So um, here we have outcomes of a spinner. And so the spinner lands on red seven times, blue eight times, and green five times. So they want to know what is the experimental probability of landing on a red. Well, what you do is you add up the total number of outcomes, which is 27 plus 8 plus 5 is 20. And it lands on red seven. So you have 7 out of 20 and that would be the probability landing on a red. Spinner does not land on red, so that's everything else besides red. So you'd add 8 and 5, put that over the total 20, so it's going to be 13 over 20 that the spinner does not land on red. Another example, working with experimental probability here, a manufacturer inspects 1,500 electric toothbrush motors and finds that 1,497 of them have no defects. What is the experimental probability that a motor chosen at random will have no defects? So what you do here is you find the total, they inspect the 1,500, and they want to know, based on this information um, chosen at random, what is the probability that will have no defects? So it says it finds that 1,400 197 of them have no defects. So you take the no defects over the total, 14,000, or I'm sorry, 1,497 over 1,500 is going to give you about 99.8% of the 
electric toothbrush motors um, have no defects to them. Here they said um, there are 35,000 motors in a warehouse. Predict the number of motors that are likely to have no defects. So what you'll do here is take the total, 35,000, have no defects. Again, you take that 1,497. Actually, um, for this, you take what you found previously, the 99.8%, you multiply it by the new total in the warehouse, 98.8% of 35,000, so you multiply, change this percent to a decimal to be 0 0.998 times 35,000 to get 34,930 motor, motors will have no defects. So they are actually wanting the exact number. We're here previously in A, we were finding a percent. So your final answer for this is 34,930 motors will have no defects. Now we're going to move on to theoretical probability, and that is the ratio of number of ways the event can occur to the total number of equally likely outcomes. So theoretical probability is the number of ways an event can occur with the total number of equally likely outcomes. So um, I have an example kind of comparing theoretical and experimental probability here below. Um, when you toss a coin, there are two possible outcomes, heads or tails. The table below shows theoretical probabilities and experimental probabilities of tossing a coin ten times. So when you're working with experimental probability, remember um, it's the total number of that event occurring out of, or the number of heads occurring out of the total number. So maybe three heads occurred out of total of ten flipping of, um, of the coin. But with theoretical probability, the likelihood of landing on heads or the likelihood of landing on tails is half. Um, so you can have one head occurring out of two sides of the coin. So theoretical probability would be half, where experimental probability would be 3 over 10. Looking at tails, the experimental is 7 tails occurred out of a total of 10 flips. Well, what's the likelihood of getting a tails when you flip a coin? That's half, because you have two sides of the coin, one side's heads, one side's tails. So notice how they, um, they compare the two types of probabilities right there. So let's look at some examples of the theoretical probability. Um, an experiment consists of rolling a number cube. Find the theoretical probability of each number, or each outcome. So rolling an even number, well, you have to think of how many even numbers are there in a dice. There are three. You have two, four, six. And how many total sides are there are, are on a dice? There are six. So the number of ways the event can occur would be three. Out of the total number of equally likely outcomes is six. That can simplify to half. So the percent or probability, the probability of that is 50%. Rolling a multiple of 3. So you have two numbers on a dice that are multiples of 3, and then six sides of your dice. So the theoretical probability would be 2 sixth. Simplify that to 1 third. And the probability of that is going to be approximately 33 and 1 third percent. Example 2, it says the odds in favor of winning a free drink are 1 to 24. What is the probability of winning a free drink? So what you're going to do with this is the odds in favor of winning are 1 to 24, so the odds against are 24 to 1. So this means there is one favorable outcome in 24 unfavorable outcomes for a total of 25 possible outcomes. Because if you add the two, 1 plus 24 is the total 25, but it says the odds in favor of winning a free drink are 1 to 24. So um, with that being said, the number of ways the event can happen could be 1 out of the total number of outcomes is 25. So the probability, theoretical probability of this example 2 is 1 over 25. And that is it for experimental and theoretical probability. Thank you.